You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. I just realized something. Um, it's spring. Well, it's supposed to be spring. I don't feel like it's spring, but we have we have Chris's favorite thing. We need to. We have Chris's favorite advert to to put up. And it's the first Tuesday of April. We should have that up there because the the feasts begin this week, uh, this month. And we're not we're not gonna. Maybe I'll play it later on. When we get our coffee break. Yeah, and during intermission. <laughs> during intermission, yeah. Good morning. Oh, man. Good morning. Good morning, morning. y'all. Alan Aguirre with your Chameleon Church Show. It's coming to you live and direct from northern Utah, the Wasatch. Back with our co-host, Pastor Len- Leonard Parada and entrepreneur extraordinary, Chris Rosentrader. Are those fair? Are those titles still okay to use these days? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know you might trigger somebody. Yeah. Ah, uh, what's new? Speaking of triggering, Chris, how was your Easter weekend? <laughs> oh man. So I'm not. I'm not triggered. You know. So you're the only one that. Okay. I I can't find a church. And the last church. We Alan. Found, oh, Alan. Have you ever thought the problem might be you? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, all every day. Uh, actually, I, uh, I'm t- I'm teasing you. Tell, tell us, a, tell us about it. Especially after watching that interview that I did with the uh, uh, atheist having cocktails with Christians. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm pretty much a problem. <laughs> <laughs> loose tongue, loose tongue. What What were you going to tell us about your Easter weekend? Well, uh, well, so. We, we don't have a, a, as much as I'm the advocate for, you need to find a church and go to a church and find fellowship and blah, 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 blah. As much, I, I, it's almost hypocritical, it feels like to say that because I don't have one presently. <clears throat> and it's not for a lack of trying, it's just because of where I live. There literally aren't any churches I can go to. We have tried. So anyway, this last one, you, you, you know the church where we, we were visiting there's there's something not good there when even my daughter and my son are like going oh my god they just said this or you know when they start manifesting corn says i'm acting like you and he's and he hates that right he's like i don't want to be like you you know and i'm doing because you know because they think i'm critical can you believe that people think i'm critical anyway <laughs> so it's got to be bad if those two are going holy moly what's the, what the heck's wrong with these people so that's the only reason why we're not going. And I can't go, we can't go to a home church because that's just not, oh, that's, that's even worse because we're basically there watching the demons, you know, having a little cafecito, watching the demons bounce off the walls. We, we've, we try, I mean, and we still try. It's not like we've given up and we'll never go to church again. No, 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 no. That's not true at all. But when we did go to a church, cause, so this is the only time in our lives we, we don't, being in Utah, this is the, since Lenny's church shut down, this is the only time, this is the first time in our lives, and it's, we're going on, on how many years now, that we're not a regularly, that we're not regularly attending a, a place on Sunday morning. I don't like that. That makes me very suspicious about myself, but no, for no lack of trying. But when we did go, on a regular basis, whether it was, you know, whatever. We never went to church on Easter Sunday. And the, I, I think the last time I remember going to church on Easter Sunday was when I was playing drums for your church, Lenny, in Burbank. And we would go to the Pickwick, right? Yeah. Remember we used to do the Easter Sunday service at the Pickwick? Right. I think that's the last time I ever did anything like that. Yeah. And after that, I just never did it again because I don't do Easter. But I was in the worship band and, you know. Um, but we we just wouldn't go to church on on Easter Sunday so that we could avoid the um, 
what I call, what I say here on the Chameleon Church Show, trying to be respectful and polite, and I'm trying to be sensitive to the uh, my audience or the audience, and I call it I cock a doo doo show versus the other word, which apparently I said two or three times on that uh, atheist interview. Um, we wouldn't go to church on Easter Sunday so that we wouldn't have to deal with the insanity. Oh no, the last time I went to Easter Sunday church was with you, Chris, when I visited you. Like eight years ago or something. I think that was an Easter Sunday. Because you had all the Easter stuff. You're, you're muted. But I think I was with you. That's interesting. I don't remember that. It's all yeah, my you fault. Remember when I, you, 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 you brought me out to visit you. Yeah, after... I, remember, I remember that. But it was an Easter Sunday. I mean, I, I think that would have been like well, trigger, there was... trigger days for me. But there was Easter stuff everywhere. In your church. I remember that. Anyway, I even got pictures. Anyway, my point yeah. being, yeah. I we never went to church on Easter, and we never went to church like for a week leading up to Christmas. Because it was just I no, we're not gonna do that. You know, when the worship band starts doing, you know, I mean, even though there's like two or three Christmas carols that are actually like incredibly powerful lyrically, like, you know, that goes over Christians' heads, like the, the, the let earth proclaim her king. Come on! <laughs> the earth is proclaiming him as king? That's lost on Christendom because he's not, he's not coming to take over the world, Alan. That's, 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 that's crazy of you to think. <laughs> really? Well, you think about it every year, dumbass. Oh. Uh-oh. So... Even when we were going to church, we didn't go to church though, during those two holidays, fake holy days, because um, for all the obvious reasons. So, Lenny, I don't think you're actually going to a, a church now, right? Yeah, now, right? I've visited quite a few, and I love the guys, but uh, it's just every time I went, it was uh, I just it was really hard being there because the one guy I had a really good um, rapport with, he took me out to lunch and everything and he reads the same stuff I do and everything, but he, he admittedly just says, I can't teach this to the people. He goes, I'm afraid. And I'm going, well, do you want me to be there to back you up? And he kind of like said, nah, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, the people that were on uh, Thursday nights with us, a uh, few of his people from his church are going to the Zoom study, and they're starting to watch Chameleon Church uh -oh. on YouTube. And so because they're getting their Hebrew roots, and so I'm going, you know, maybe that's where my influence lies. But we didn't, we, we haven't, it, you know, our, our churches, Saturday morning watching Jacob's Tent in Linda, then we'd listen to the scriptures, and then, Every Sabbath, we just we just chill with each other as much as we yeah. can, unless we have to go to a grandson's soccer game. Yeah, but I, I, I I'm really open to visiting others. The one I haven't visited yet was the Calvary Chapel in Arcata. But oh, that's going to be hard. Oh, that's going to be really difficult. Just because that's gonna be really hard because they're not one. They're not charismatic, and two, they're everybody. A lot of them are, Everybody up here is pre-trib, and I'm already got everybody angry at me at that one. So <laughs> <laughs> they know when I'm walking down the street, oh, they yes. think I'm they think I'm Jonah with my skin falling off my flesh. <laughs> He's coming back. Oh, so, uh, Chris, how was your weekend? Oh, I was good. I mean, it's fine. Whatever. What I mean, what are you gonna do? Living in the land of the Terrans? Is that what we say? Yeah, living among the Terrans, yeah. No, no, I played I played drums at my at my church. <laughs> I am I am I have been with you on the Christmas thing for years, even before I was Torah observant, meaning you know, we, our church uses like all other churches these days, use planning center app and you can and to schedule, you know, but you can block out your calendar to and I tend to block out my calendar in the month of December just because it's so, I agree with you. There's some amazing Christmas songs, but we usually don't play them. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh man! But, but even wah, so, wah. And then, but then you got the you got even even the band leaders are just like it's like it's there's this feeling that we we hate doing this, but it's expected. Yeah. And so, like, when your leader's not into it, you're just kind of like, you know, you have to do this because you're getting paid or you're in charge or whatever. But uh, I'll just like hang out for a while, and so. Easter, I've done that on Good Friday too, but Easter, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm conflicted for sure, you know, conflicted yeah. for sure when you're, when you're, although I would have to say at our church, the, 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 it was more tame than usual, but it was a good service. I mean, I mean, our, our church is full of worshipers, meaning, They'll go for it. We'll play. We'll play for an hour and fifteen minutes sometimes. Like, like it's not. It's not super time-based box like most churches are. It's pretty free form, which is really fun. And and I love love worshiping music. I'm playing music to worship. You know what I mean. Um, so it's a good. That's all good. They bat, we baptized seven people. Um, so the spirit's moving. But then it's just it's just conflicting, you know. It's like I texted you. What do you say if someone says Happy Easter? Because <laughs> I didn't say Happy Easter to anyone. I mean, you know, you're just kind of like, yeah. I was jo- I was joking with a friend of mine. It's like, you say Easter, I I hear Ishtar. Like, you know, just kind of oh like, gosh. I can't say Happy Happy Day of Ishtar deity. Like, you know, I can't. But I would just do like you said you do. I just kind of smile or thank you, give him a hug. You know, I mean, yeah. what can you do? What can you do in a in a five second interaction? You know, you 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 can do Val Kilmer. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's just on the surface, you know. And then we had a bunch of people over, my in laws and my sister come over, and then uh, Steph Easter ham. Yeah. No. No Easter ham. Everyone. <laughs> and there was no. There, like everyone, everyone knows there's no pork happening. However, someone did show up with a salad with a side of bacon. You know, I, I don't know why you put bacon on salad in the first place. I mean, you know, bacon, when, bacon, it, bacon, like bacon chips. I mean, anyone out of anyone Texas, that's normal, right? There's bacon on everything in Texas, but you move out of Texas and salad, especially in the Northwest, there might be vegans there. I don't know. Why would you bring bacon for salad? Anyway. Dude, we went to Thanksgiving in uh, with some family members in Texas once. On the table, and we were desig- the, the Aguirre clan was designated on a certain table. And in the middle of that table was a big thing of stuffing, and it had pork in it. And I'm like, I've been doing Thanksgiving for a few decades, and I've never in my life have even heard of, let alone seen, pork inside stuffing, Thanksgiving stuffing. It's yeah. huge. It's I'm like, huge. I've never heard of it. I'm like, and you gave it to us because mm-hmm. the because the, the stuffing on your table doesn't have it. It was deliberate. I'm not gonna say who it, who it was. Okay, good on you. Anyway, but 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 it's interesting because it's conversations, you know, later with kids and had a conversation with my wife and like it's they're they're very they're supportive. Oh good. And, I was gonna ask, and, how's that and, going? No, no, it's it's going good. It's it, but they see the tension now yeah. because it's a com- frequent conversation in our house. Like I try to do it, bring bring it up weekly. We we usually um, Monday nights and Sunday nights are turning into a family hang, which is really cool. Like and so you know, just in the living room the other night, we were just I forget what we were around. Oh, the conversation was around technology and phone iphone usage and you know all that and me and steph are telling them we want you to have to manage it we don't have time to manage it but we want to manage it but there are rules and which came up into discussions about idols and idolatry and the commandments and so you know nice. I, my kids are getting it and i feel i feel the most supported from my daughter nice. um so it's like steering the titanic dude that's the exact thought I had. I, I, I a barge. It's a barge. There, there, it's just so. <coughs> how, how do you? 
even changing it in your tight circles and the people we'd have over for dinner, like it's just, and there's varying, there's varying people on the spectrum, right? There's so yep. there's people way out here. They're like, you're an absolute idiot. That's old Testament. You're crazy, bro. While they're out and in it, the fields offering to goat, uh, yeah. goat demons. And, and then you have the others like, huh, why is that? You know, skepticism. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Acting interested actually are interested. And yeah. then you have others like, oh man, if I'm wrong, I don't want to be wrong. You know, yeah. so it's, you have all types and just try we, not to make it all about me. And I'm, I was ready to talk to it on another level this year, but that didn't happen. And, you know, reading, reading up on Tammuz and yeah, all that. And just how you speak knowledgeably about it and have the angle of conversation to like, I know I'm not going to change everyone's heart today, but like, what are the talking points? And but yeah, we didn't really go there, but we had a, a very, I'm going to use the word, a very powerful Monday night gathering last night. And it, you know, part of it was where, you know, where, where do we get the resurrection? We're in the, we're in the coming out of Passover into first fruits in the Omer count. And part of the chapter five of the feast book. Cheers. And um, and it touched on Tammuz and where did the resurrection Sunday come? And so you have to go to Ezekiel where you see the elders with their back to the temple facing east, worshiping the sun because that you know the sun only comes up on the east in the morning. So there's your sunrise service, and it's Tammuz and all that stuff. And it's like really powerful. It got really powerful. I was it was pretty impactive last night. And there's a Muppet in the YouTube chats. So you're saying we can't do Easter egg hunts at church with the kids anymore? It's like, really? That's, that's what you're getting out of this, huh? You know, just like the, 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 the example of everything we're talking about is in our chat commenting, you know, completely <coughs> clueless to anything that's going on in the spirit realm because they're not spiritual minded. They're completely in the flesh. So they, they, they don't hear. It's like Charlie Brown. They heard what they heard for an hour and a half was wah, 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 and all they could focus on was eggs for kids to go looking for. And it was like, wow. That, how sad is that? I mean, that's just tragically sad, you know. And it, anyway, it was, it was pretty powerful. It was powerful. Last night was really good. So if you haven't seen it, if you weren't able to join us, be sure to go check out last night's Monday Night Gathering. It's a two, part two of four regarding um, chapter five of the Feast Book. Um, yeah. So I'm glad. I'm, okay, good. I'm glad you didn't have anything weird. That's good. No, thanks for writing those books, man. They're, they're oh, helpful. I, 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 my I, pleasure. I, I flipped, I flipped them, you know. It literally had all... nothing to do with me. God told me to do it, and then he downloaded, so I'm like, oh. Because I've read, I, you know, I, I, we're going through it right now, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not this smart. I couldn't have done this. <laughs> this, is, this is somebody else's work. It's solid. It was, it was just the solid. Lord, you know. So, yeah. All right. Well, hey. What's going on, Lenny? You wanted, you were uh, suggesting we talk about something. I didn't. I never found the chance to look, watch it, even though it was only thirty minutes. Uh, we also something have, about this is something. Also, this is also supposed to be Testimony Tuesday, by the way. Oh, that's right, Testimony With Tuesday. People, totally people are supposed it. to bring stuff, so we should get to that later. All right. After, well, let's. After. Well, I bet you everybody else forgot about about it too, huh? Um, Let's see. What, what was your What was your topic, Lenny? You know, I, it had to do with Lance Wall. Now it's evaded me right now. It had. Uh, I think it, it has had to, to do with the the eclipse, the, the and, eclipse, the, um, yeah. and the uh, shipwreck that uh, uh, the boat that went into the bridge. That uh, it was really really interesting that he brought up the point that that Francis Scott Key Bridge, he's the one that wrote the national anthem. 
And, and he, he tried to make the correlation and it was interesting. And you can make these kind of correlations because if there's science, there's science that here we have this upcoming eclipse. And it was fascinating that just about a quarter mile away when Francis Scott Key was right at that same place where that bridge was built, that's where the memorial was. And it was memorialized because it was, uh, the bridge was supposed to be right where when he was looking off into the distance when he wrote the uh, national anthem and uh, it went down and um, he, he tried to make the correlation of saying, you know what, is this a warning or is this our opportunity to pray? He said everything yet he came up short. I thought he was going to talk about just, us fighting for us being a sheep nation, but he, he made an inference to the fact that uh, um, he goes, we need to take a look at what's going on around us. We need to wake up. We need, we need to see, we need to, to, to really pay attention. Uh, too many things are coming too fast right now. And we've been saying that for a while now. I mean, what we've been studying on Thursday nights has all to do with that. Just we're into the parables that, Jesus laid down on the red letters that are all warning to say, wake up, wake up, wake up. And so I thought it was interesting that what Lance put out on that, he, he kind of like stepped out on a limb. So that's, that's that whole issue there with the, the bridge that went down. Yeah. God, and, you know, in the, in the fact that whether it was, the fact that uh, foreign governments can control GPS and can control which, which government was that, Lenny? <laughs> no, he, just, he, just, he just yeah. he said there's they've done this in the, put it this way they've done this in the uh, Gulf states back in the, uh, Iran where America has the tech, same kind of technology where we can mess up people's GPS and make things yeah. go off course. Well, it's happened twice since then now. So yeah. apparently, there's three bridges now. You know, it, it's. There's, there's a handful of us that sound like a bunch of crazy people when we suggested that all the trains carrying chemical weapons, or no, all the trains carrying chemicals were being derailed and these chemicals were being spilled everywhere. And there's a handful of people out there thinking that it was uh, suffrage, is that the word? They were being suffrage. sabotaged? And suffrage. everyone thought, oh no, they're just regular train accidents. Oh really? A whole bunch of them all at the same time. Okay. Well, now this. There, if you read any of the history with, with Germany and Germans and the Third Reich, no one was, no one, it was too late by the time anyone got around to going, oh. And then, the, then those that were like, complicit we're just like yeah um well we you know we we're just we we're just following orders you know we didn't want to get in trouble and that's what we're doing it's it's it's, 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 a, it's the interesting uh, i put it this way and when we're looking at those parables it's a battle for leadership because what's happening is is that many of the uh everyone's dull they're not awake they're not seeing what's going on around us and that was the same thing that happened when he came the first time. And uh, the leadership is just burying their head in the stand. And they're, they're, not, they're not paying attention. And it's interesting when Jesus gives that parable um, and he speaks very, very clearly, he says to those, some are going to just be caught up in confusion, but other leaders who did not speak up, he says, I'm going to cut them to pieces and throw them into the lake of fire. And uh, he was very, very emphatic about that. That wasn't an idiom. And you, and you look at that and I'm going, everybody's just on the edge. Well, is it that even that time to think about that? I go, are you kidding me? Look at everything around you. And it says, just like Noah, they waited and they waited. Life went on. They didn't want to be unperturbed. You yep. can say a lot of different things about marrying and giving in marriage, but the fact is, is that they waited, then it was too late and the door was shut. It's like the 10 virgins. 
Right. I'm coming up on that this next week. Yeah. Well, here's something. While you were saying, while you were speaking, I, I had this thought. Here's something Christianity should probably take into consideration, and that's if a whole bunch of people that were versed in the scriptures, that knew the scriptures inside out, upside down, you name it, if those guys could miss Messiah. Right. So, no, and we've, we, there's two factors that, in, that they had going that, for them that we don't as Christians. One, not, they knew the scriptures, like I said, inside out, and two, they were looking for them, and right. they still missed them. I mean, I believe a lot of them knew it was him, but they killed him anyway, right? So if, if those guys, people that knew the scriptures better than anyone else, and they were looking for him, if they could miss him, how much more are, are Christians going to miss him when they don't even believe the scriptures apply to them and they're working with this commentary called the New Testament? How much more are they going to miss him? And we're not actually looking for him because we really don't believe he's coming back because if we did, we would live accordingly and we don't, Christianity as a whole, right? And then my favorite Add to that the fact that you know we always we, we tend to also forget that we live in a in a in a, in a realm that's governed and managed by demon by the demonic, which is untruth, which is at war with God, and their goal and their their whole job is to deceive us. So we're living in a realm, a deceptive realm, that the majority of us can't discern out of. We don't believe he's necessarily coming back, and we and we and, and the majority of us don't agree on how, when, where, or why he's coming back. And then, and then you can and then you pepper that with the with the the glaze of. They thought he was coming as a lion, but he came as a lamb. That confused yeah. them. We think he's coming back like a lamb, but he's coming yeah. back as a lion, and that's going to confuse them. And. That none of that isn't be, is being taken into consideration, I don't think. No, and in the church, they're making such dramatic lines like, "Well, well, we haven't seen that yet," and what they don't realize with what, like what you taught on the false prophet, there's such a homogenization in Christianity that you know what, it's not going to be that too much different when the beast comes on the scene. No, and they'll think. He's just oh. another Christian religious leader. And it, right. people go, what? Especially when he's coming back doing what they're looking for. They, they're it's, looking for world peace. They're looking for uh, coexist. And they're signs and for, wonders. What's that? Signs and wonders, too. Yeah. They're looking for all this stuff, all this social justice stuff. That's why the CL, the Christian left, is going to be completely ransacked. Because every because the only character in the biblical narrative that is offering what they're looking for is the Antichrist, That's the beast right. system. Jesus isn't bringing peace. He's bringing war. He's coming to judge the living and the dead. He's coming back slaughtering kings. He's coming back to establish the proper borders of the nation state of Israel, which none of which the majority even more today than five, than, than than this time last year are are in alignment with. Uh, it's bad. It's going to be bad. It's interesting that when he says, you've done this to the least of my brethren, you've done it to me, the biggest test coming in is the believers standing with Israel. Oh, my gosh. That's what gets them to lose their head. He's talking about the Jews when he says, you've done this to the least of my brethren. That's not Christians. That isn't the charismatic church. Those were Jews. And he says, if you haven't done, if you haven't done it for them, when have we done that for them? And uh, most of Christianity is going to run like hell the other way. They're not going. What? Um, and um, they've they're already the whole anti-Semitism and all that is just already ramping up for that kind of stuff, and they don't realize that. Well, what's scary is the growth of preterism, and yeah. they believe that the Jews were the Satan mentioned 
in all the the, the 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 prophecies of Jesus in Matthew 24 and all that, it was the Jews that was Satan. That's terrifying. Chris, what are you doing? What are you thinking about over there? Uh, I had a clarifying question for Lenny, and he disappeared. Yeah, well, you know how that happens sometimes. So was he saying... Was he saying there are, there's coming some days where the church globally will get to accept Jews and people will come out against Jews? Is that what he, is that what he's saying? He's saying that or that will those, increase. Those of us that side with them will be will come after us because they're going after them. I had to blow my nose, so sorry. <laughs> Is that where you're saying, uh, Lenny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those those that are going to side with Jews are going to get are going to be on on people's you know lists simply they're because gonna, they're, yeah. on, they're they're going after the Jews. That's the main thing. That's that is the main thing. <sighs> and, then and that's why it's so important. We know our Hebrew understanding. We observe the feast days. Observe His commandments. I've, I asked this question a few years ago. All you know, the the alternative Christian music scene, uh, not only the musicians but the the, the listeners. Uh, Chris, you'll attest to this. How many of them? And some, some. There's a couple of people in our audience that can actually that know what I'm talking about. How many of these people are running around with Hebrew tattoos? <laughs> oh man, I remember that. That was a big time trend for a yep. while. And they're going to go, why do you have Hebrew on there? Are you a Jew? No, uh, I thought it was cool. Hey, it's just not going to work. <laughs> There's wow. a lot of Hebrew tattoos running around. And I, I, and I asked that question a while back. So what happens? So all you anti-Semite Christian left guys with Hebrew tattoos, now what? Yeah. <laughs> What's that tattoo? Oh, it's the name of God in Hebrew. Oh, cool. Oh, my gosh. That's an actual thing. It is. It's a... Yeah, they had yeah they had the thorn, the thorn armband on one side and the yeah. name of God <laughs> in Hebrew on the other side. Yep, that was a thing. Hmm. Crazy. Well, I don't think anybody remembered that today was Testimony Tuesday. Uh, I'm trying to remember why we told them to come with testimonies because we were talking about something last week and we're like, we know that this has impacted you. Come next Tuesday with testimonies regarding it. And I don't remember what that subject matter was because I've, I slept, I've thought, I've written, I've done things since last Tuesday, um, <laughs> and there's nobody giving a testimony. So that's like, so there's that. What's this one from Jason mean? Salvation testimony. I, I, don't, I have no idea. Hmm. I don't no know. Idea. I don't know. How you came to the Lord. Well, yeah, thanks, Lenny. I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, of course. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man, you earned your paycheck today. Look at that. I did, didn't I? That's some discernment I, I right mean, there. I, I had something cool actually yeah. happen Sunday. Oh, uh, what happened? I mean, I mean, there was a lot of people that showed up at church. Um, yeah. It's really interesting, especially in the youth. A lot of teenagers showed up because a couple of teenagers were getting baptized and you know, teenagers that are not not Christians at all by this, any stretch of the imagination. So God's really moving on them uh, in the youth and my kids' circles. And uh, there's a, there's a there's a lot of kids in you know that are that are really pursuing the Lord, which is cool. But because there's a lot of visitors and a lot of people showed up, there were I I talked to two people that kind of had a falling out with. A few years ago and we you had a falling out with them uh yeah like not like no no i was just clarifying that's yeah, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, said yeah. i wasn't sure where, where it, it was less of falling out but just lost touch during covid era you know holy oh. spirit oh you know like and they just disappeared they didn't want to hang like, out with you because you were ghost, killing grandparents you were ghosted, killing grandmas ghosted text you know Text, yeah. you know but we were in frequent like frequent contact getting coffees lunch and then not didn't return texts for well, three years because you stopped wearing a mask and you didn't get vaxxed and they showed up 
and I'm having lunch with one of them Wednesday and another one next week, you know, so, cool. you know, people, we, we, talk, we, we, we complain a lot on this and bemoan, but, but still there is a remnant. There, there are people, the thought that there are, God is still working on individuals and he brings yes. some back around. So I, I was really encouraged to see those guys and we'll see where it goes Wednesday. Do you think people think, do you think people that casually watch this broadcast think we're just a bunch of doom and gloomers and we hate everybody and everything? Let's take we a give ball. Our, we give that perspective? Because um, we know it's me. We know, we know that I'm the problem. We've, we've concluded that. Have you ever thought that it was may, might be you, Alan? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I mean, people, there's, there are a few that keep coming back, so they either are sardonic like us or I don't know. Or they're or clueless <laughs> like us. They come for you, they stay for Lenny. Like, that's that right? Is that how it works? No, they stay for you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. You're the you voice of reason. Up, baby. You're the voice of reason. You bring you the you love. Don't, you don't get triggered. You don't you don't say bad words. It's coarse language. You're nicer than us. Yeah. Lenny and I are old and jaded. That's right, baby. I'm a dinosaur. You're the voice <laughs> of <hope. laughs> In fact, it should be like this for all the time right here. Bam. <laughs> It's the Chameleon wow. Chris show. Wow. Wow, wow. Hey, you should... so so Lenny, were you talking about your Nazarene friends? Yeah. A while ago when yeah, you Yeah, I love saying... those guys. They're really I mean, they're good hearts. They care for people, they love and and uh, he wants so much. He started uh, bringing people up front to pray for him and have the elders come on up and when I was with him, I says, why don't you teach the people to start laying hands on them and <laughs> doing that kind of stuff, you know? And and uh, so, I can understand where he's coming from. He's afraid. So know? what what happened if you're not really hanging out with them anymore? Was it, did you just get tired? Like what's, what happened? It's just, it was, hard. it was. Because they were talking about making you yeah, leader or elder. Like, yeah, what, Lenny, what, what happened? happened? You know, I just, uh, I, I don't want to, I'm not the kind of guy to push my way into anything. They watched this show and they said, you're hanging out with a bunch of riffraff. Oh, I, I sent him a lot of stuff. He still appreciates. I send him stuff all the time. So I, he might think I'm, we're just, I'm too radical, whatever. It's all right. Too radical, honey. Hey, with that thought, uh, let's go, go, uh, go freshen up your cup of coffee. We'll be right back.
right, sorry, just buying time so I can finish my cup of coffee or get my cup of coffee made. Lenny, so what's my up? My wife just brought me one. Oh, very sweet of you, of her. All right, so uh, did we get any testimonies while we were away? Nope. Nope. All right, well, apparently we're not doing a good job. All right, well, we've got to figure out something to talk about now for uh, 25 minutes. Chris, you got anything? Hmm. There sure are a lot of laws regarding leprosy in Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty people. Kind of, kind of um, disgusting descriptions, too. About hairs and spots and so glad I don't have that. You're I was thinking you're way ahead of me. I'm only in Leviticus five. I mean, I'm I'm reading about it. Like, so you have to go outside the camp, and I'm thinking of some of the. Pra I'm just thinking, okay, what was practical about this? I mean, if if you're in close quarters in a camp, right? They're protecting the tribe, right? There's that. Like you're, the, okay, separation because you're unholy, but also practical. Hey, if you're sick, go out there because if we get sick, it's you know, you know you're it's a, it's a sheltering or protection of the people in a way. But like, so if they'd have to be out there seven days, there was there would always have been someone outside the camp when the cloud or pillar moved. Right? So then that's the question. Were th when they were outside the camp, were they also outside of the covering of the, of, the, of the cloud by day and the fire by night? That would have been cold at night. There's wild animals. There's stuff. They could have died out there. And, and, and that's a good point. I don't think I've actually considered that before. You know, um, the Quakers. Is it the Quakers or the, the people in Philadelphia? What are, the, what are, the, what are the, the Amish. The Amish, every time their kids turn 13 years old, they have the choice. When their kid turns 13, they have a choice to stay in the community or, or they, they, they lose their mind. So there's constant, between I think the ages of 13 and 18, they're, 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 they're like exploring the world. Sex, drugs, alcohol. Yeah. What's, what? They're spreading their wings. Right, and they're and they're involved with all sorts of bad stuff, and then the idea is hopefully they'll when they at the end of that time they'll come back and it'll be out of their system. So that means there's rogue teenagers in that community the entire time, yeah. and I've never thought about that when it came to what you just said. There's people outside the camp all the time, but are and, they are they separate from the fire and the and the cloud and as well? Hundreds or thousands, wow. right? Well, then, do, doesn't he call them uh, riffraff at some point? He uses the word riffraff, God does, regarding them. Uh, is that the English standard version, riffraff? I forgot. I think so. I, it's I, in there. But then, and then, so imagine, imagine. Oh, okay. Apparently it's called rum spring, springs or whatever, and it starts at 16. Okay, 16. So for two or three years, they're running, they're running <clears throat> wild. Thank you, Christina. She's like our producer, but she's not. <laughs> um, but then at the same time, how, if, you're, if, if, you, if you're not cooperating and you're being thrown out to camp a lot, that's going to bring some animosity, disgruntledness. There's going to well, start factions. And well, maybe that's how they found out that there was people out in the forest or out in the wilderness sacrificing to goat demons. I mean, they're human I mean, and they have no reference. And how, you know, when I'm reading this and, and reading it in a different way, every time I go through another book of the Bible, like, you know, in the following year, or two, twice a year, next time I read it, stuff just comes out, which is why we read it, right? You're, you're always learning. There's always something yeah. that the Lord can show you. It's alive. You. And I'm like, man, this is so, just trying to play the movie in your mind about the scene. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Okay. They're clean. They're not leprous. They got a place to live. They got their little tent or whatever. And then, by the way, side note, later he's talking about plaster. So then they were in permanent dwellings. 
which is interesting because the law is coming while they're not have permanent dress dwellings but that's another question but let's say they have their tent their normal tent they're under the cloud they have leprosy now they got to go outside the tent outside the camp so they're whatever separated by a quarter mile maybe even a half a mile away from where they usually live right and then the cloud moves Jeez. so now they kind of got two dwellings but they can't go in the camp to move their tent so so the main camp moves the lepers are falling behind and now they got to do the double work of like picking up all their stuff but then now their tents contaminated that was there so did they stay behind forever or like not forever but for another seven days so now they're but then the, the so that they would be clean so they move their tent but then they have to go to the priest so they would have to catch up to the priest then go back and get their craft like i mean there's a lot of details in there that logistically they're just like man what but this would reinforce obey the command fall law and it will go well with and you. live and live because if you don't your life you're gonna be like in debt like right you're gonna be you're gonna be screwed yeah you're gonna be but, so far behind and yeah but then that's why god came down on the amalekites so bad because the amalekites attacked their rear guard and it was probably right the small the small and the elderly it said the women and children and the elderly uh, and but it was probably they probably were attacking all these scattered peoples that were outside the camp. And God was like, nope. And that's why they were supposed to wipe them out. I mean, he was really mad at the Amalekites for doing that. They're like mm -hmm. an enemy forever. Yeah, they're bad hombres. They really are. Or, really or bad hombres. It? But but there you go. Like, like Chris, you just explained. There's a, there's a whole bunch of outside the campers that are scattered with no Bounces. defenses thousands and and the Amalekites are picking them off like fish in a barrel and then and then if the camp does move there were there nice family members that said oh he's outside the camp we'll move his stuff for him and catch up later like I mean it's just I had never thought about those kind of details but it makes sense makes sense about living in play, pleasant places like obey the command obey the law stay clean otherwise you know. you're on your own yeah and it's you'll interesting. Have to... i remember bob jones always used to teach on leprosy itself he says being he goes there was a spiritual tie-in and i forget how he came about that to gossip oh wow and uh he says when you look at skin disease and all that kind of stuff it's it comes from that inner thing where people always will blame someone else and then they will gossip about it or tear that down and they become unclean. And he says there are so many um, parallels to the fact of why them, they'd be putting them outside the camp, why they had to go through what they needed to in the cleansing and the cleansing of their house, the cleansing of what they wore, everything. It had the skin disease itself had a, uh, uh, all to do with what came off the lips. I, I always thought that was interesting. And praying for people with, uh, I've seen people who got in prayer, they've had rashes and skin disease where they got opened up vis-a-vis -vis the old inner healing type of thing, turning out that they had extreme bitterness inside. Wow. And God doing healing. Just a thought. Just Wow. Hey, Lenny, you want to take this one? What is it? In regards to sin offering, do you think somebody was forgiven for breaking a Sabbath? If they did, did they bring a, a, a sin offering? I'd have to look that up. And uh, if they broke the Sabbath, I thought they were um, Just put to death. The okay. Well, we have the, the account. Yeah, un, I just read that part in Leviticus 6 where the unknowing and the knowing sins. Yeah. It depends if it was knowing or unknowing. And there was a whole litany of issues of those who did something and they didn't know that they did it and what they had right. to bring as far as a sin offering. But My, what they did know and they did it 
I thought the person who broke the Sabbath got stoned. Right. So uh, pr our producer is telling us uh, that they were stoned. Right. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Good job, Christina. I concur I, with you. I, I, I see a person... Remember the pop off? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that Peter Pop off guy, man, that guy blew it so bad. <laughs> he was like, oh. um, her name is Sally. She lives at. He got busted, man, for that. Hardcore. Somebody was suggesting, someone suggested to me, I, I don't listen to this guy anymore because after the. Uh, the false election. He uh, he was he's a young younger prophet, and he and I respected this guy up until that point. And then he decided, um, yeah, I made a mistake. I, I I prophesied a second term, and he it didn't happen. So he like stopped. He stopped his prophetic ministry. Now he's pretty much TMZ. It's really kind of weird, but he's kind of like TMZ right now. But anyway, someone suggested, well, you know, if they have a registration then they can easily give him those registration names and their social media accounts and their handles and stuff. And then he can go and look these people up and, or have his people research them ahead of time on social media and give them stuff on them so that when they come to the conference, he can go, because uh, I'm, 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 I, I was at a meeting in Vegas with, with this guy and he called out somebody's screen name. That's a, the, I, Butterfly sprinkles? What the heck is butterfly sprinkles? That's my screen name. And they came and they got prophesied over it. You know, that's why I tell people, and, and we talk about this in that interview that I did that I'm trying not to tell people about because anyway. Um, it's so distrusted. People that have been hurt by the church, hurt by leaders, and especially in a, in a, in a spirit-filled church, are so not trusting that you can, that, that, that that was a healing, that you actually can heal, or that that was actually a healing. It's like a huge deterrent for them when it comes to the things of the Lord because of, of, of silly stuff like that. All that misrepresentation, it just gets in the way so badly. Um, what? Okay, we have some. We need some help here. Didn't who try? But Yeshua was able to get past them. Who are they and them? It's a question the one before. It's a question before. Oh, and, oh. and she and she's right. He slipped through, and they did try to stone him a couple times, but. They tried stoning Jesus a couple times. So if right. they thought Jesus broke the Sabbath, yeah. or the man carrying the man, blah, 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 why wasn't he stoned? But he did a lot of acts. Seems like he could have got stoned for. I know there's a Yeah, they did try to stone him a couple times. Yeah. yeah. They tried throwing him off the, 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 the cliffs of Nazareth. And he just kind of like disappeared among them, it says. He's like, nothing to see here. Yeah. He's, I am not the droid you are looking for. You go back and reevaluate your life. Hmm. And like it, the the woman caught in adultery. They, you know, by they're they're okay. Law says stoner. Like it seems like there is fast judgment. My wife, she's so cute. She should be on this show. She, she should? Yeah, she should. Christina, you should be on the show. Yeah, back to Leviticus. I, I just think that... um. I mean, the priests were acting as medical doctors, too, weren't they, in a way? Like, how did they have the medical wisdom and they would have had some sort of, like, training, right? Well, and they, they discerned if it was spiritual or not. 
And if they you know, were disobedient, <laughs> they knew what the cure was. And it, and if they were close enough to it, weren't the priests kind of unclean too, or they stay clean because they weren't touching it? Like it's just really interesting. Were they unclean till nightfall? And so they depends had a problem. If, they touch, if they, it, it, it depends on what they touched. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 length depended. Think of so, the winer. Think of the winers. Then I mean, I, I'm just thinking. There's so many winers, dude. I'm. I mean, I'm thinking like they had it hard. I mean, that, that's that was a rough. That would be a rough life, carrying your tent, moving around, and imagine the winers out there that just kind of barely like they'd be like, I just barely. I just just one little hair. I'm barely a leper. I don't. I just have this. Be like, and now I have to go out in the camp with the hyenas, like. There would have been some stubborn, disobedient, complaining whiners, and they're like, "Sorry, Dude, the like, rules I, I, a rule. Rules a rule." I guarantee you, there was a there was a woke contingent contingent that was, you know, anti anti purging of the land of Canaan. And, you know, Canaanites' lives matter too. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you. You know that Dathanites. you know that happened. Those were the Dathanites. <laughs> yes. The CLMs. Yeah. Canaanites' lives matter. And I'm telling you, there was a group of those people, and they were the ones that would then. And then, if they survived it, they were the ones. They were they were probably worshiping Baal and Asherah and doing all that stuff because Israel they didn't do they didn't finish the job. They left them. They left them in the land instead of doing what God told them to do, and that was to annihilate them. And they succumbed to their forms of worship and intermarriage, and oh. and it wasn't it wasn't good for them. Yeah, a, a lot of that is be, actually, well, by the time the Pharisees got around to it, they, they, had already per, they had perverted it, but it was part of the temple in the Torah. It was part of the temple system. Uh, for example, the, the priests, they were supposed to leave their, their, their temple garb. They couldn't go out into public with it so that it wouldn't, so that the holiness and the anointing wouldn't jump on the common man. So there was there was a separation between them and the people. There was this almost like a status, you know, thing, you know, because yeah. the Levites didn't have an inheritance. They were supported by the people, things of that nature. So by the time it developed, uh, in, so that just turned into a weird scenario where yeah. They they elevated themselves above the people while, when they were with the people versus serving them. It, they became politicians, essentially. Wait, after the Maccabean Revolt, you, you had, what, 100? It was, a, that, it was 300 years, I think. You had a total Hasmonean um, syncretism between uh, what was left over of the 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 grecian um the influence of what the greeks were bringing down the influence of what rome was bringing down and you had all the herods who were totally corrupt and they had all this mixture with the temple uh priesthood at that time so you had this hasmonean slash 
Hebrew uh, uh, laws that were set up. That's why the priests weren't even functioning like they should in the temple as when they were in the wilderness or before that or during the time of David. They were, they were so far removed. They were what yeah. we would see in modern Christianity today. You got so much syncretism, of uh, so much mixture. It's unbelievable. And so, you just said when, Jesus, when Jesus came along, he he. That's what he was busting. Not just the laws of man. I mean, yeah. these were the laws of uh, the devils. Also, I mean, it was all synchronistic, syncretistic, shall I say? And but and and they were so high and mighty. I mean, they were like just. Oh yeah, they were not cool. They were they were not cool, and they didn't treat the people. It, they're depicted really well in the in the in the various like uh, the, the Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson. They're just they're so you know just conceited and all that. Um, I'm reminded of uh, of something I've shared before. It's it's that there's a, that ad you just mentioned something about Christianity. That attitude still exists out there. I've mentioned how I navigated the secular music scene of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and I navigated the Christian music scene, and I did so both pretty successfully um, until I had to save my, my, my life and walk away from it. Um, and, but all that to say, I am navigating the Christian speaker author scene. Wow. Um, you would think somebody that knows how to do that other stuff could easily do this. It is such a good old boy club. I mean, it, they literally, it's, it's, it's actually harder than the secular music scene, my experience in the secular music scene, and my experience in the Christian music scene is the Christian speaker author, author scene because it's such a good old boy network and because it is so such a respecter of persons um, scene. They, they're really, they're really tight-fisted on who they allow, and I don't fit the mold in any way, shape, or form, uh, in any way, shape, or form, but it's, it really is that, I don't want to use the word exclusive, because I don't think the word exclusive is bad, it really is that um, prejudicial, is that a word? <laughs> sure. It's not, it's not cool. It's not cool. And there's a, you know, talk about ghosting. Oh my gosh. I've never been ghosted so much in my life. But isn't that weird? That's sad, isn't it? But it's true. It's a really, yeah. It, it's, it has, it's that same kind of attitude. You know, what, okay. Remember that vision or was it a vision or a dream? Whatever it was, Lenny, they were policing Jesus. This is, goes back to the 80s, early 90s. Um, I think it was around the blue guitar thing. But okay. they were policing Jesus. They were like, you know, kind of like uh, SS. You know, not SS, Secret Service. Well, that is the SS, Secret Service SS. Oh, my gosh. So they were, like, they were acting like Secret Servicemen, how they protect uh, a politician or a celebrity. And they were policing Jesus. They were not allowing people into to Jesus that they didn't deem worthy or qualified. These like, you know, bodyguard types. They were policing Jesus. They were, the church was functioning like bodyguards or secret service. And they determined who they would allow in to Jesus based on their criteria and their whatever and their, you know. Do you, do you remember that? I, I, vaguely, yeah, I remember. I remember it came out of the, the the Kansas City camp. It was Bob Jones and those guys. If I remember yeah. that, right? I'm not. I don't remember who it came from. I just remember that word. Right. And they were policing Jesus, and they were determining who could come in, who could access Jesus, based on their uh, judgment of the of the of the individual on their criteria, not necessarily the Holy Spirit or God or the Bible or anything like that. Yeah. And I'm talking people I champion, people I endorse <laughs> are doing, have, are doing, have done that and are doing that to me. It's, it's sad. What can you do?
What can you do? Keep on keeping on. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, man. Yeah, and that, this is why we're talking about that, because they, they were. They were functioning as gatekeepers by that time. And they were yeah. not they were not even cool about it. I mean they were just blatantly and Jesus was like, No, you guys are you guys are demonic. Like you guys you you know, you go you traverse mountains and sea and all that to make a disciple and then you make them twice the son of hell you are. What a line. Kaylin was right. That's she talks about that's what during the Jesus movement, that got shattered. But what happens, it all came around again, and um, as they got more sophisticated, it just crept back on in. Yep. Oh, I remember going to the pastor's meetings, and man, you felt you, it, it, was, it was the good old boys club. Yeah. It would be like that, and you go, oh, I thought this all changed. Nope. Well, because you have to remember who got, who got involved. I mean, Chuck Smith wasn't one of those guys at all, in any way, shape, or form. He no. wasn't a hippie no. at all. He was, he was an established guy. He was, in, he was part of the establishment. And so when they came, so, right, and so he did what he did, and then they came in, and he, you know, frog in, a boil, in, in boiling water, slowly convert him, because now look at Calvary Chapel. You know, huh? um, whereas John Wimber, who went the charismatic route, was or had been involved with the music scene, so he was a little bit closer to them than Chuck Smith ever was. Yeah, but then even that shifted. It's 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 all the people around him that shifted it, right? And I and we and I've said that before in, in various ways. The larger your audience becomes, the more. The influence you, you have to conform. You, you you will conform. That's why Lonnie Frisbee couldn't take off. Yeah, it's interesting that in, in looking at because I've been in both camps, they allowed the vineyard still the local church to basically run itself, rather than you know you have the five distinct narratives in Calvary Chapel. If you don't, you cannot be part. That's just yeah. the, the distinctives, and that was never the case. But the vineyard's becoming that way, though. That's the thing. Well, it's, vineyards, like, vineyard lost everything when they when, vineyard. I think lost all their mojo when they separated from the Kansas City Prophets, and that was before the present situation that they find themselves in. <laughs> oh man, here's a here's a little insight. So as 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 much as they were the Pharisees, for example, gatekeeping people from church, from Jesus, from, you know, Messiah, from God, as much as they were doing that and they were horrible at it, I mean, Jesus was saying horrible things about them because they were not, they were bad hombres. Um, they were not able, they weren't, they, they weren't, they were the priests at the time, but they weren't able to do any of the healings or any of the things the Levitical priesthood was able to do for the people at all. They weren't able to do any of that. Which is another reason why they hated Jesus, because Jesus could, and they couldn't. And a lot of these people that we're dealing with today, I think, find themselves in the same situation. Or, if they can, God's going to lift it off of them, because, I mean, or they'll continue to be able to, do, they'll continue doing it, and not have the fruit, and be charlatans, and then that's just, it's, yeah. it's such a mess. I, I, I remember when uh, Bob Fulton telling me, John Wimber's brother-in-law, he said on John's deathbed, he goes, I wish I would have pastored Kansas City. He goes, I wish I would have stayed to pat. I wish I could have. I wish I would have pastored it rather than just cut off. But he had other outside influences that yeah. were cutting him off. But it's interesting. Then you look at the whole prophetic, the whole Toronto. It's all gone the same way. Yeah. And then talk about outside influences. We know for a fact that the Pharisees were afraid of their position with Rome might get taken yeah. away. So they... They played the game. They played to the outside influences, which was Rome. 
in the time of the of, of Messiah. You know, this has been going on for a very long time. Look at what Catholicism did to the faith. Look at what they did. You know, Constantine? Christianity is now the uh, state religion? Come on. That was a cock a doo show from the very beginning. And then, so here's, right, here's what they do. They, they, they eliminate, they, 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 illegal, they, make, they make Torah illegal, being a Jew illegal, a penalty of death, no Holy Spirit, and the whole planet plunges into what's known as the Dark Ages. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Well, what does the church, the stripped down church look like? Remo what does it say in Revelation 12? They kept his commandments, his the testimony, Jesus, which is the spirit of and they love not their life to death. That's the church. That's what we're supposed to look like. And that's going to get stripped down, and it tells us that in Revelation 12. Those that keep the testimony of Jesus, they keep his commandments, and they love not their life unto death. There you go. There's the ecclesia. Welcome to Chameleon Church. You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelogue Network, its sponsors, or affiliates. It reminds me, yes, I know, this is one of those Marvel movie after the credits type of uh, segment. It reminds me what, what, we're just, what we just said at the very end there of... Um, there's this, it's, it could be like an old wives tale or just like, it's, I don't know if it actually really happened, but um, these priests were visiting, I guess, the Vatican and, and they were being shown around a little tour of uh, the Vatican by this cardinal or whatever, a bishop. And um, they showed them the, 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 the Vatican bank, you know, area. They showed them and how they had, you know, so much money. You know, there was all this money, tons of money in there. And the cardinal guy, bishop, he's showing off. I mean, the guy's being, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty egotistical about it. And he looked at these little priests that are visiting from who knows where, and he says, ha, no longer can we say silver or gold have we not, you know, have we none. And the, one of the little priests said, yeah, nor can we say in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I'm pretty sure he got fired right away. Oof. 